Okay, this is the May 15, 16, 17, May 18th, 2020, the worst year ever, uh, bonfire. I was going to wait and light this sucker up because I thought, my mom told me, I am not going to live past Mother's Day. I said, okay, if that's the way you want it, then that's the way you have it. You know, it's, it's her time. Well, Mother's Day was last Sunday. And this thing was ready to go. I mean, I've got this stacked with wood, with a lot of paper, gasoline, paper, wood, gasoline, anything flammable, weeds, you get weeds that just pick up off the I, I built this really deep and really sturdy. Got a big, you know, most of this wood here, I chopped that, uh, that was an avocado tree. And there are the uh, branches. I chalked every single one of them down, except for one skinny one that was going to fall and hit the uh, telephone lines. Or whatever the lines they are. Power lines. So I had my sister's kids do it, because they'll do anything without thinking. But they actually thought it through. I said, just chop it with the machete and it'll fall. And the older one that's going to uh, someplace, Northern Carolina. Yeah, he got a football scholarship to the Campbell Camel Toes. Which, you know, you see them on TV all now. So he goes there for like a month or two, he comes back, comes back, back and forth, back and forth. COVID comes out, he does all his tests online, you know, his brother and sister sitting there helping him, no different than paying, you know, people are going to pay for their kids to get in, at least uh, my sister's kid, he knows what he's doing, I just wish he'd pick a better, uh, uh, well, I don't know. This this could turn out good for him. But he should do what he likes. Because my son, if nothing else, he chose a career that he enjoys, which is computers. And he can build them. He can fix them. He can do anything that has to do with computers. And for a while, he was kind of getting into stage lighting, which is cool, and there's a computer element to it. But, uh, you know, eventually he got kind of tired, and the place was kind of a scam place. They were one of the non-union lighting places, so he was getting... He wasn't going to go anywhere there. I told him, you know, if you get a chance, get out. And uh, maybe go back to school or something. But when the older they get, the harder it is to tell them, or to not tell them, but suggest <laughs> to them what to do. Because you want them to make up their own mind. So I suggested he went back to school. Turns out he's the computer genius. So they ended up giving him a getting him a scholarship to UCLA to get his master's. Did the four years at uh, Valley and then took whatever class he had to UCLA. They pulled a couple professors out of retirement just to teach my son 
because they said they've never seen somebody, somebody so, you know, uh, talented in that field and, and just working. Superior, just amazing. So that's cool. I said, great, go for it. If it's falling in your lap, take it. Uh, so there you go. I mean, my first choice was not the film or TV industry. It was music. But I also gave myself a time limit. 30 years old. I hit that limit. I was still playing. We were still selling clubs out. But we weren't making millions selling arenas out. In fact, hardly anybody does. There's a few. You hear about them. But these are people you've heard about for 20, 30, 40, 50 years now. There's not many... Like, Poison would never do a stadium tour on their own. But they're being backed up by Motley and... Who is that tour now? Poison... It was Motley Crue. Some other crappy band that I just had no desire to see. I can't remember now. Motley Crue. Who was it? Well, you guys are probably yelling at it. It's Motley Crue, somebody, somebody, somebody. And I'm like, well, I kind of want to see Motley Crue, but I just walk out after the third song like I did last time. But, uh, you know. Anyways, so I'm back here burning this shit because it's going to rain tomorrow. 70% chance and I don't want this to get all soaked again and I finally dried it out and soaked it in gas mowed the whole front and back lawn fast because see I do the night shift I uh, go in every half hour 20 minutes half hour look at my parents see if they're doing okay if they're not help if they are fine if my mom needs you know stuff done I'll do it I'll help her make sure she's covered and everything's doing all right she's breathing good check all that if she needs medication do that wash her give her some ice all, all night I do this every night when my dad goes to bed whenever that is 10 30 11 10 so I can't do anything. My life is food because I get up at like four because I go to bed about eight, but I never really get to sleep till like ten or ten thirty because stuff going on, and I want to stay awake until whoever's supposed to be here gets here. And I gotta let it out. No one's gonna see this anyways. But I see this, you know, I've wanted to go down. I used to go down to the to Zuma every year when that blue tide came in. And this year I can't do it because I gotta stay here for my parent for my mom, basically, and for my dad. <coughs> Cause I'm like, Dad, do you need me? I don't need you. Okay, then I'm taking off. No. Okay, well, I need to go to the store. Okay, be back in 20 minutes. Fine. So, that's my life. Every single day. Seven days a week. 24 hours a day. So, the only time I get off is when someone's here and he's wide awake. Wide awake. I can't let him go to sleep in case something happens. So, my aunt drives down every couple of days. That's fine. It's my aunt. That's my mom's sister. That's cool. My sister drives down every couple of days. My dad lets her have a lot of uh, responsibility. I'm, I'm not sure why. I 
I, I was a manager of Photochem audio department, the entire optical recording department. I dealt with every large account that we had, Warner Brothers, Universal, uh, Paramount, whatever, Sony, uh, whatever. That was it. It was me. They had to deal with me in order to get their optical shot, which is not a not as big a deal uh, ten years later. But I did that. Before I did that, I was doing uh, you know post production, dealing with everybody. You know all these shows. Uh, geez, a long time ago in the nineties. But uh, Chicago Hope, uh, Picket Fences, uh, can't remember the other one. It was a cop show. A lot of shows. And I would went from doing the, uh, you know, basic work, just, not, you know, doing the film prep, getting the film ready, cleaning it, chopping it, you know, all that stuff. Getting it to the guys, and they do the uh, transfer to digital. And now, everything's digital. So, you don't get the overtime waiting for the uh, film. Because we used to get... I'd go in at 10 p.m. I'd get out at 2 p.m. the next day. I'd go home. Go to sleep. So, at like 3. So, I'd slept from 3 o'clock to 7 o'clock. Got up. Went on a walk. Took a shower got dressed right back down there 10 o'clock clock in get everything ready do the paperwork wait for the film that's where we made the most of the money <laughs> but any monkey can do that for I mean there was a little more involved there because there was film you can't screw the film up if the film breaks you need to know how to fix the film which isn't that hard, but you need to know how to do it. You need to know how to splice film. So, I was always there for that, and whoever, so... There was all this stuff. And I did that for... Let's see, 95 to 2010. But it was, you know, different things I was doing, uh, whatever. So anyways, the point is, is I was manager at Photochem of the audio department for five, six, seven years. 2003 to 2010. And this is manager you know not just the flunky it took a while i got him to go for a certain time slot because i was living in utah flying or driving back down to california and then working monday tuesday wednesday for 14 hours a day and then driving or flying straight back up to utah which is you know, five and a half hour, six hour drive or a, you know, really quick flight on a small plane turbo prop leaves from Burbank, flies into uh, St. George. But that was a little costy. Eh, a little, eh. And I was making good money, but I wanted to buy two houses. But my wife, ex-wife now, wanted to pay off all her debts. So she was paying all her debts off and just paying for the house, not paying it off. Like I told her in two years, I'm just getting through this because I always do. So anyways, then all that shit happens and I get in an accident and the doctors are like, because I've had to go through all the records just in the last two days because i got to find out the uh, name of the hip so I can try to sue him again. Just watch The Pretty Fire. And, uh, I'm pissed because I'm like, I lost a five and a half million dollar deal with that. <sighs> Just because my, uh, my stupid ass, uh, 
attorney was an opiate addict. An opiate addict. Something that I was before. <laughs> you know, and I'd been off it for years. And this jackass was 70 years old and he was sucking it down. So the other side found out. They waited until two days before the trial. Got hold of him. Said if he didn't pull out of the trial. Because it was slam dunk for me. And the judge's name was Randy Friggin Rhodes. So I thought, oh, this is meant to be. I got it. So my my lawyer signs the paper saying he won't sue and then forges my name saying that I won't sue I didn't find out until later I called up another attorney Larry H. Parker and he had my attorney disbarred which he didn't care because he had money and he's just a 70 pound junkie laying in bed and there you go it's kind of karma but he's, he's still breathing but you know what a life that's no life so there's that and now my mom not my mom there's two people in this world I do not want to lose ever my son obviously and my mom I have some other kids out there, but they are not. I have kids that I raised. They weren't my kids. They were other, you know, my girlfriend's kids, but I raised them for years, for five years. No, I raised them for six years, almost seven years. They called me Pops, and I took them to school. I dressed them. I ate them. Ate them. I made their lunch, everything. It was like they were my kids. And I treated them like my kids. We went on a picnic every Sunday afternoon, and it was great. So all this stuff, I've done all this stuff. So since I was 18 until my last divorce, constantly married or living with somebody, taking care of kids, because I got, you know, my girlfriend pregnant. I was 18, she was 16. So until the accident, everything went away. All my effort was to try to, you know, physical therapy so I could move again. And I did it. Because they said I'd never walk. I'd never do anything on my own. I'd have to have help my whole life. <clears throat> And now I can take care of my, see that's right there, that spit. I never used to do that. But I only have one lung now. My right lung. My left lung is completely scarred because of the aspiration that happened during the second thing. So I'm sure you've all heard this. Building up to something. So now this happens. My mom, my dear, beautiful, lovely mom gets cancer. Worst nightmare in the world. Worst in the world. My son is not taking it well. He came down here for a week and he came over and he slayed next to her. He didn't sit there and pet her hand and then go out in the front room and watch TV or whatever everybody else does. Or come here for a couple hours and, and do stuff and then leave. Or drop by for 15 minutes and feed her some shit that she's not supposed to be eating. She hasn't really eaten anything since April. She's not supposed to eat anything, like food, like because she will aspirate. The last stroke she had made it so she can't swallow properly. So she's gonna that's the way she's gonna go. <coughs> so I'm online trying to look something up to tell a friend, you know, this is what I need fixed on a video. And I see somebody in my family, and it's like, boy, you sure need the rest, you know. You know, you and your dad are sure doing a lot. And I'm like, it's not me and my dad. 
and I'm here 24 hours a friggin' day. And when she comes over, or when the other person comes over, I, it's, I, that's when I'm sleeping between 11 and 4 or 4.30 because I usually get away, I'm awake and I'm like, I'm not going out there. Because as soon as I go out, it's on, you know, I got to start doing stuff. So I usually try to brush my teeth real fast, wash up, and then what do you need done? Because no one ever changes, well, there's a lot that goes on with people that can't take care of themselves. And they think that, oh, well, you know, I come by, do it once, and it's done. No, it's done through, you know, several times a day. And you never know what she's going to go through. What stage of this cancer is she going through? How am I handling, you know, I don't care how I'm handling it, really. And I did care about my dad. I do care to a point. <laughs> You know, how is he handling it? And I want him to be comforted as much as possible. And I try to tell him, you know, let me do this, let me do that, so you don't have to worry about it. You can get some sleep. And he says, I can't sleep. I don't, you know, blah, blah, blah. I'm laying there awake all night. She's making noises. And I'm like, it's good. She, you want her to make noise, don't you? Yeah, but it's hard for me to sleep. Blah, 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 blah. I'm in there every half hour looking at him for 10, 15 minutes. He's sleeping like a log. She's sleeping. Not like a log, but she's sleeping. And I can hear her as we turn the fan. I've got a way to turn the fan off after she goes to sleep. She doesn't hear it. It's just that she gets 70, 80 people. Oh, you need the rest. You've done this. You know, I'm like, you know what? I don't care anymore. Let anybody who wants to just take the glory, take the glory. In the end, I know, and if I, anybody gets offended, whatever. I know God knows what's happening and whose heart's in the right place. And not saying that no one's is in the wrong place or I, I think some people that have come over and that's nobody you know it's not any close close family it's not me not my sister not you know none of her kids not my son but there are people that come over to uh, steal take stuff medicine uh, junkies Oh, what is your mom on? There's a there's a lady, you know, comes asking. What does she do? Does she take for pain? You know, she need this. She need this. no, no. She's fine. She's not in any, and she isn't in any pain. We don't give her any painkillers. In fact, the only painkiller we were giving her was Tylenol, and we were told to stop doing that. So that's it. So she's not on any. She's the second person I know that's had brain cancer that has no pain she just cannot go because she's got a strong heart not only a strong heart but a good heart and she's the sweetest person in the world she's a saint everybody that I know you know the few several hundred people that have said anything have written me notes called me See, anybody can drop a friggin' Facebook thing. And some people have to because, you know, they live far away. But still, if you know my number, it'd be nice to call. And I've gotten some really nice calls. Like my old drummer, JD. His friend, he's taking care of his friend as his friend dies from cancer. Going through the same thing. Except his friend wants to stay alive, so he's got a lot more work to do. But, uh, my old singer Mandy, his mom died last year. And he, this was his first uh, Mother's Day alone. And he said, you know, my mom wasn't perfect. Not like mine. <laughs> I mean, everybody loves my mom. She's a sweetheart. She liked everybody. She trusted everybody. And she is an angel. And I... 
if anybody she will be she'll be touching the hand of the Lord as soon as possible as soon as he's ready for her to go she will go and she will go straight to him and that is it if anybody deserves to be at the feet of Christ Jesus our Savior is my mother and and really that's all that counts I started off on a long ramble man how many minutes a half hour almost really it doesn't matter in the end what really matters is it's not how you live your life or not it's not if you live your life it's how you live it and it's not how you get through problems or if you get through problems it's how you get through problems so this is a difficulty it's not if you get through it. Anybody can get through anything. I got through a horrible accident. I got through a horrible divorce. I got through losing my job, my everything. Eh. I had tons of money. It's gone. People ask, why don't you try suing to get it back? Why? It's gone. Money's money. Why keep, you know, dwelling on it? It's just going to hurt you, nobody else. So, that's... Look at... And that, the fire's done. 25 minutes. That's because I got this thing. The Dakota... Uh... Thing. This thing sucks the air into here. And it just fries it. So I'm going to knock it down a little so it's not so high... And if it catches again, it'll just be briefly. I mean, I've got kiss books in there that I bought that just got ruined because people left them out in the backyard. And I'm hoping they didn't leave my uh, Aussie... Like, my friend Jeff Brent put on these Aussie things for a bid. I'm like, I have every single one of them plus... A couple that people were naming. Oh, if you had that on there. I'm like, I got them all. I just hope they didn't put them in the backyard. <laughs> because uh, we had to move stuff out. Because we thought we were moving in a whole hospital bed and everything. But we ended up not having to do that. So, what is, is... And you know what? I love my sister... And I, I want us to all to be happy. I just don't, I don't want to fight. I don't want to quarrel or anything. I just want everything to be how it should be. Like a family. Like a functional family. Not like a dysfunctional family like I see all around me on both sides. I want to be the family that semi-functions. Hell, I've been divorced twice. My sister's been divorced once. Hey, I got one honor. I want to just get through this. My mom to pass peacefully. And that'll be it. I mean, it won't be it. I'll remember forever. And I can't wait to see her again. And I will. I know I will. Because of uh, the atonement and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And I hope you guys believe in it somewhat. In any way. Even if you have a just a little bit of belief. That's enough. So there's your... There's your uh, preaching for today. I go to church now in my car. And I got my scriptures, and I got my tablet to look stuff up, and I got my phone to talk to people. Like today, missionaries called. And we had a, uh, we talked to people about uh, the church. About, you know, not about the church. 
It's not about the church. It's about Jesus Christ. It's not about the church. It's not about rules and regulations and commandments. It is about commandments and keeping ten simple commandments. And if you get baptized, then it's about keeping those commandments. And if you break them, you repent. And that's it. It's not that hard. It's just don't get sucked into the world. Don't start drinking, doing drugs, sleeping around, doing all those stupid things. Because it'll just ruin your life. And I can tell you, I know first friggin' hand. So don't do it. <laughs> it's that simple. Really, it's that simple. So that's my talk for today. I'm just saying, you know what? God bless everybody. And everybody that has helped. I know my cousin Lisa really wanted help. But I know she's got some uh, health problems. And it's keeping her from doing as much as she wanted. Uh, I really don't know what's going on with other people in my... Especially in my dad's family. Every one of them should have been out here by now. And why they're not, I have no idea. They have no excuse in my book. So, you know, you either get out there. I mean, get out here and you see my mom while she's still breathing. Or you don't. And you're... That's very uncool. I've gone to everybody else. I mean, the only person I missed was the one I loved the most, and it was a total accident. My granddad, because they used to call me out, granddad's dying, come out. And I'd get there and he'd go, Michael, and he'd hold my hand, and we'd talk for a couple hours, and that would be it. So Christmas Eve, they called, they said, get out here, granddad's dying. <laughs> and it was like a 45 minute drive. I go, are you sure? Because every time I go out there, Granddad doesn't die. Maybe he's just saying that to get me out there to talk. So I said, I'll come out tomorrow on Christmas Day. He died. You know, I wish I would have gone out, but I was just there on uh, Thanksgiving. And we held hands and talked. You know, he was old. He, could barely, he was just like my mom is now. He could barely talk. But I understood every word he said. And the last word he said to me is, Michael, I love you. Be a good boy. And I was like, really? That was 1989. And I stopped doing my devil stuff. And I was just doing the theatrical fatal attraction crap but that's what I tried to do 